Hello, I'm David Denton and here we've got the final reveal of my latest painting and it's called Revelation. I originally planned out this painting using ZBrush and Keyshot and I've got quite a few videos on that on my channel. Once I'd done that, then I started painting it and again there are many videos detailing this whole process and they're all available on my channel. If that sounds interesting to you and you're new to the channel then you could consider subscribing and hitting that bell so that you're notified of all my upcoming videos. Now let me take you through the final stages of the painting process. So I have shown one of these in another video that I did, the way that I painted the palm trees, but this is probably the most, well, it is the most detailed one and the, the trickiest to do. So I start again by doing the trunk of the tree and again, quite stylized. I didn't want this to be too realistic. In fact, I didn't actually look at what a palm tree looked like. I went more for a, a, a symbol of a palm tree because I wanted that sort of childlike feeling of innocence and uh, almost like a toy. I wanted to have that feeling of opening up, of unwrapping a present and it's a toy inside. So to kind of give that feeling of the shock of when you first open something up and you reveal something. So the way that I did this tree again, if you haven't seen the previous video, is that I painted a solid leaf first of all. And for this one, I put a lot more colors onto it, as you can see here. Spent a lot more time just getting all of this shape and the form right. You can actually see a, a finished tree behind. It's a bit more of a background tree, so I've kind of dulled it down a bit. Well, here you can see I'm spending quite a lot of time just getting this all sorted. You can actually go quite bright on this, a bit more excessive than you normally would really. If I left it like this, well, I don't know, maybe I would leave it this bright, I don't know. Possibly. But the mistake I made on the first ones that I did, I didn't add enough contrast into it. So at the minute you can see there's not too much contrast in this, but I do sort that out later. I'm just putting in these base colours first. And that little bit down the middle that I take to a nice fine point. And then I'll start working on the darker parts. Getting in those little dark areas around the leaves just to pump up the contrast a bit. I'm playing that little balancing game of this being a foreground object, but I don't want it to overpower that robot that's behind it. And now here's, here's the tricky bit. I started painting in the background color. Now on the other trees, it wasn't too bad because most of it was space. Whereas this one, the background to this tree is the robot. So I'm painting all those little lines in to match what the background would be. I wasn't sure whether I was going to do it this way, but I thought, no, let's stick to that, the same style as I'd done for all the other trees, and let's do it exactly the same way. And it does give you those gorgeous sort of colours within the leaf that would be very hard to do if you were painting that in single strips. And I think you get away with the background possibly not being perfect because it definitely isn't and absolutely not spot on but I think you get away with that more than the leaves of the tree not being spot on. So some of these bits I, I put in the colour first and went kind of over where I should do and then I put another red on top of it and oh, it generally took quite a long time this. And I tried to make it so that I didn't just do straight lines to it. I did somewhere you can sort of see the leaves have sort of folded over each other. This was quite tricky doing something that's straight underneath it. I did have to do a little bit of sorting out on that later just to make sure that it looked right. Overall, it was quite fun though doing this. It's something different, makes a bit of a change. Yeah, you can see there I went back in and changed that white part. It just wasn't quite straight enough. But it, it is hard to do when you're painting all those little lines. 
This was nice because most of this was black and then I could just add in some little tiny flecks of colour to look like the gunk behind. That was good, that was quick. But I'm not sure how long this took me. Probably, probably a couple of hours to do this tree, maybe more. It'd take a long time. So just this one element took a long time. I mean, if you've seen the video for the um, robot, that took me five hours to do. And if you don't want to watch all of it, but you do want to watch a bit of it, I'd watch episode four of that, because that's where I do the fancy kind of Hollywood stuff, all of the lovely lighting techniques and things. So if I had to watch one of those, I'd watch the last one. Right, now I've turned the painting upside down and I'm looking at the painting more as a whole now and what I needed to do was to increase the contrast in certain areas, especially in the foreground just to pull all of the foreground together and to unify the foreground as well so what I decided to do was to add an extra colour into my palette and I, had, I added in Prussian Blue just to make the black blacker because I made the black with Prussian blue ultramarine because I still wanted that in there as well I didn't want too much of a difference alizarin crimson and cadmium yellow light hue just to make that blacker touch darker and then I had to go back into all the black areas and just fill in the the darkest areas of those. I made sure I got some next to the white areas as well just to really boost that contrast in the foreground areas. The other area that needed a bit of work was this planet here and this robot that needed some more contrast putting into it just to pull it more in line with those real foreground elements like the sandy planet and the, the gunk around it. So it's not quite on that level, but almost. It helps turning it upside down at the end because you notice things more. You notice where an area is, say, lacking a bit of contrast or something's not quite right. So that's why I've turned it upside down. So this area definitely needed darkening up a bit. I'd spotted this a while ago, but I'd left it till now just to make sure it definitely needed it. Yeah, just a little bit more contrast into that planet, which will be at the top. Then one of the final touches I did was to add in this very subtle reflection of the rocks and the grass and the trees. I also added a little bit of bloom around these eyes as one of the final little touches. Now let's switch to brush cam for the final bit of paint on the painting. <laughs> that's it many many hours of painting and planning and designing and painting and yeah but it's done but before I show you the final painting let's have a look at some of my initial plans so what I wanted in this painting was to get time and peace into it so for me time meant movement because surely that's how you can see how time's affecting things and peace I went for stillness so something that moved something that was still I went for planets I'd got this idea about juggling into my head as well so originally I was going to have creatures on all these planets juggling and essentially going back and back and lots and lots of people juggling as it went back into the picture and I ditched that juggling just I don't know it didn't seem to seemed to quite fit it. This was going to be the an original kind of idea for the creature that was going to be juggling and you've got that kind of dome shape to it like a normal distribution curve and that spiral and that actually carries across to the final robot because there is a pipe spiraling around the robot and it does have that dome shape. Here's a little sketch of some planets with gunk in between them. This was the first appearance of the gunk and I'd also put there about a blue explosion in the background and I ditched that. It, I think it had been visually 
too much it's quite a busy painting anyway so i think the blue explosion would have just been visual overload and there's my very first design of the robot which is incredibly similar to what we ended up with i ended up in increasing the backpack and making that look more like a guillotine but it's very very similar even so it did take me a long time to sort of render it in zbrush and get everything just exactly how i wanted it and i ended up putting legs on it too which i felt it needed to be moving around that environment so from those humble beginnings we're going to get to the final painting so now i'm going to shut up and let you see it So there you go. I'd like to say a huge thank you to everybody who's supported me throughout the painting of this image because all the comments have kept me going. It's, it's been a long slog to get this one done and your support's really been appreciated so thank you very much for that. Next week I'm going to have two videos out, one on Wednesday where I'll be showing you the final version of the Christmas postcard where I started doing that a couple of weeks ago but here's the final version of that and also on the Friday I'm going to be taking part in Dina Tollefson's pumpkin challenge so that video will be out on Friday hope you've enjoyed this whole process I know yeah I have yeah it's been hard work but I've enjoyed it I'm looking forward to starting something different now but thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video have a great weekend <laughs>